if you're not aware of who David Starkey is, um, he is one of Britain's most prominent, most famous TV historians. Um, honorary, well, he was an honorary fellow at, at Cambridge College. We'll, we'll get on to that in one moment. But anyway, he spoke to um, Darren Grimes on the new Right Wing channel, which is supposed to, the argument they make is that you can speak freely on on their channel. And boy, David Starkey did. Um, let's take a look at the moment, which has rightly caused absolute outrage uh, across the country. Slavery was not genocide. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many damn blacks in Africa or in Britain, would there? You know, an awful lot of them survived. Um, and uh, what it, what, what again? There's no point in arguing against globalization or Western civilization. They are all products of it. We are all products of it. The honest teaching of the British Empire is to say, quite simply, it is the first key stage of world globalization. It's probably the most important moment in human history, and it is still with us. Its consequences are still on, and generally speaking, in most ways, actually fruitful. There are downsides, again, as the Brexit vote demonstrated. So that's how you go about tackling it. And as for the idea, as I said, that slavery is this 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 kind of terrible disease that dare not speak its name, it only dare not speak its name, Darren, because we settled it nearly 200 years ago. We don't normally go on about the fact uh, that Roman Catholics, once upon a time, didn't have the vote and weren't allowed to have their own churches because we had Catholic emancipation. And you know what? We had Catholic emancipation at pretty much exactly the same time that we got rid of slavery in the 1830s. Mm -hmm. We don't go on about that. I mean... One, obviously, unbelievably racist. Slavery was not genocide. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many damn blacks in Britain and Africa. Like, this is real neo nazis like it's fucked up european look but, european and people are saying, oh, slavery isn't genocide because genocide is a systematic effort to wipe out people. Europeans tried to do that in lots of parts of Africa. You know, if you, you know, Google the Herero peoples, you know, this was basically a predecessor of what the Third Reich was trying to do. They, they explicitly say, we want to wipe out this whole nation of people. About 90,000 Herero in the 1903, Imperial Germany in, in, in modern-day Namibia. Basically, they explicitly say, we want to wipe them out and expel them from the country. They tried, Europeans tried their best. I mean, they succeeded, by the way, in the Americas. About 100 million people died. Uh, mm. But the idea that it's not a genocide because you don't succeed. I mean, okay, well, there's this thing called the Holocaust. There's this thing called the Armenian Genocide. There's, there's, there's plenty of genocides which were genocides. But, uh, you well, know, it's, also, it's also kind of an irrelevant point, right? Because I even if you're going to take the very strict oh, he's, a definition of, he's a historian. I mean, take a, if you're going to take the strict definition of genocide, which is sort of an active intention to wipe out a people of a particular ethnic background, you know, often involved with settler colonialism or you know, Nazi ideology in the case of the, the Second World War, then that's not necessarily what was going on. But what was going on was treating people like objects and causing mass suffering and mass death, right? So, so morally, whether or not you call it a genocide, it doesn't seem to make much difference. The point well, was they tried. a crime against humanity. They did try. I mean, they genuinely tried. You know, in, in Kenya, the, even the British in Kenya in the 50s and 60s, they were saying, wow, the settlers here openly talk about, you know, you know eliminating uh, the, 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 the Kikuyu people, which was like kind of the primary ethnic group in, in Kenya at the time. They said, we need to exterminate these people. And the Brits were like, well, <laughs> you guys are great. They, you know, the white settlers had, surprise, surprise, a settler ideology. You know, and, and, and this is a, cro a, a Belgian Congo. You know, we're looking at eight to 10 million people were killed there in the 19th century. Uh, so, you know, Europeans, David Starkey, if you're not familiar with this, they gave it a damn good shot. Uh, but again, you know, it, it, it's troubling. Now, this this guy, we've said he's a very successful, you know, he stole a living, as somebody's rightly said in our comments at the BBC. But he also was, until recently, you know, he was an honorary fellow at uh, Fitzwilliam College. He was, uh, you know, uh, quite esteemed uh, esteemed historian, you know, CBE. <laughs> what does that count for? You know, Patrick Hennigan and Emily Oldner, both suspended from the Labour Party because the Labour leaks. They had OBEs, you know. Maybe, maybe you're more likely than not to actually be an arsehole if you have one of these titles. But nevertheless, uh, I mean, goodness. Mm. And I mean, whether or not you're going to, whether or not the intention was to wipe out people or just wipe them out in the course of exploiting them, uh, 12.4 million people were stolen from their homes and sold into a life of slavery. 1.8 million people died just on the journey between Africa and the Americas. So obviously, surviving that journey 
doesn't, you know, it <laughs> doesn't mean you're excluded from the crime against humanity that was slavery. The other stupid thing, obviously, in that video was the idea that why don't we talk about Catholic emancipation as much as we talk about the slave trade, right? Catholics were, yeah, Catholics were oppressed in British history, but the the Emancipation Act meant Catholics could sit in Parliament, right? So, so it was about political exclusion. It wasn't about owning people as objects, and it wasn't about a, a system which killed millions and millions of Catholics, right? It was it was political exclusion from the political system, um, partly because you know the government at that period in time wanted distance from from the Pope and the Catholic Church, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, terrible discrimination, but it's it wasn't slavery. It was not. Another moment in that interview, which, I mean, was arguably just as racist as that clip that went absolutely viral. Let's take a look. I cannot decolonize the curriculum because you, Black Lives Matter, are wholly and entirely a product of white colonization. You are not culturally black Africans. You would die in seconds if you were dumped back in black Africa because you wouldn't know how to do it. No, I mean, that is insanely racist. I mean, also that, I mean, obviously what you said before is insanely racist, but that's, you know, there's so much sort of like interpersonal contempt there. You know, he's sort of, he's looking at black activists in Britain right now, or all black people, and he's saying, you are, you, you were not created by black culture. You are not culturally black Africans. Your culture, what's he saying? Everything you are was created by white colonialism. So how dare you have a Ridiculous. criticism of it? It's Ridiculous. so disgusting. But it's also just uh, wrong. It's just so stupid. It's so, so stupid. I mean, look at American popular music, rhythm and blues, hip hop, like gospel, jazz. I mean, all its greatest genres are, are like, are, are, you know, they're infused by, by people who were either slaves mm. or, or or the descendants of slaves. I mean, it's ridiculous. Is that is that an outgrowth of, of white colonial culture? I mean, you have this hybrid, right, of people who are displaced and they make something beautiful in this place where they're, you know, they're oppressed. I mean, he's fucking stupid. I mean, I was saying it on the video, our numbers are Arabic numbers. Nobody thinks that like, oh my God, we're oppressed by, you know, the Arab peoples because about 500 years ago, Europeans worked out that Arabic numerals are much better than Roman ones. Or the fact that our, you know, Jesus Christ, was from you know who's born in Bethlehem? Is that you know is that white Western culture? But of course it's it's not about what the actual facts are. It's a kind of retroactive rewriting of history because of course the white man is so great that white people you know they did everything. There have been some consequences for David Starkey. Canterbury Christchurch University have sacked him as a visiting professor. Fitzwilliam College in Cambridge have withdrawn his honorary fellowship. But Starkey's racism isn't new. Um, this is not someone who hid their prejudice against black people. And before we go to this video, actually, which is from 2011, so it's Starkey speaking at the height of the UK riots, I just want to remind you of, of actually the, the important point that um, Aaron was making, which is to say it's, it's completely ridiculous to say that everyone who currently lives in Britain, whatever race they are, whatever ethnic background, they're purely the result of, of white imperialism. And, you know, he, he seems to think that's connected to globalization because... The, the elements of our culture, which, um, you know, undeniably derive from black Africa, as it were, um, David Starkey does recognize, but he has absolute disdain for them. Let's take a look at David Starkey speaking at the height of the UK riots on Newsnight in 2011. I've just been rereading Enoch Powell, The Rivers of Blood speech. His prophecy was absolutely right in one sense. The Tiber didn't foam with blood, but flames lambent, wrapped round Tottenham and wrapped round Clapham. But it wasn't intercommunal violence. This is where he was completely wrong. What's happened is that a substantial section of the chads that you wrote about have become black. The whites have become black, a particular sort of violent, destructive, nihilistic gangster culture has become the fashion. And black and white, boy and girl, operate in this language together. This language which is wholly false, which is a Jamaican patois that's been intruded in England. And this is why so many of us have this sense of literally a foreign country. So, I mean, he just... He makes it up depending on who he wants to delegitimize. So the rioters in 2011, culturally black. Um, the Black Lives Matter protesters in 2020, culturally white. I mean, this guy's a crank. What, what the hell is he talking about? 
<laughs> What's he doing on the television? There are all these people who are stealing a living because of the BBC. Who go, oh, if the BBC didn't exist, then we'd have like Fox News. Honest to God, David Starkey is mad as a hatter. Like, it's hard to imagine. Look at the people they're elevating. Julia Harley Brewer, Isabel Oakeshott, David Starkey. Uh, these, these kind of real mad cranks. By the way, the worst one, Melanie Phillips. She's, you know, I, I'm waiting for Melanie Phillips to be cancelled because Melanie Phillips, she's quoted at length. She's quoted at length by Anders Brevik in his manifesto. This is the guy that slaughtered, what, 60, 70 kids on the island of Atoya. It was a, these were social democrats. They were white Norwegian kids, right? This guy's worried about Muslims and you know, uh, you know, uh, white genocide. He's killing white people. Why is he killing white people? Because they were members of a, a reformist social democratic party. You get there, what you get the language of anti-communism and so on. And actually, Anders Brevik quoting Manly Manly uh, Manly Phillips is not an accident. You know, the the gap between what Brevik thinks and actually what what quite serious people in British politics think is that there's not that big a gap anymore, you know? Um, and a lot of them appear on the BBC. Douglas Murray, he's got a huge following on YouTube. And look, and there's a question here, which, you know, the BBC as a public service broadcaster, it has to make that assessment of, we need people who adequately, you know, adequately reflect public opinion and so on. People need to be challenged, we need to have a, a range of views. I get that. Douglas Murray at least has the capacity to make his arguments articulately which is dangerous, by the way, because it means he conceals some really horrific arguments, I think, the content of those arguments. But with Melanie Phillips and David Starkey, you're dealing with complete, you know, maniacs. You're dealing with complete maniacs. And like you say, they just change their argument for whatever day of the week it is. Uh, I mean, this Jamaican patois. If we hadn't, if Britain hadn't taken people from West Africa and put them in the West Indies, it would never have happened, David. So stop being an apologist for empire because it did this thing you don't like. Get used to it. It's their country too. He says Jamaican patois has intruded in England. <laughs> he, uh, he, I mean, it's it's a legacy of colonialism that Jamaican yeah. patois exists. And then we invited lots of people from yeah. Jamaica to fill a labour shortage in this country. Yeah. You know, and thank God we did because it gave us a richer culture, et cetera, et cetera, something that he will not recognise. We're going to go on to sort of like um, lighter stuff. Um, which is the Darren Grimes element of this whole uh, shit show, really. Um, so Darren Grimes, he's often a sort of comedy figure that we bring up on this show every now and again. Uh, he's a bit of a... I mean, he's he's kind of the dumbest guy on Twitter in a way, although he still gets platformed quite a lot on Sky News. Um, he obviously gave that interview. Now there's been this backlash, everyone sort of universally saying what David Starkey said was completely racist. It's one of the first interviews they've done on this new platform, Reasoned, which is you know supposed to be a space um, for people where, you know, in, in Darren Grimes' word, are, are you sick of getting accused of being a racist? Then come and speak on this channel. What happens? You get someone on, they're incredibly racist. He doesn't notice it. Everyone else does. He's very embarrassed. Um, let's take a look at his apology. Hand on heart, I wasn't engaged enough in this interview as I should have been. It goes about saying that Reasoned UK does not support or condone David Starkey's words. I am very new to being the interviewer rather than the interviewee, and I should have robustly questioned Dr. Starkey about his comments. However, whether it's on BBC, ITV, Sky News, or on YouTube, no interviewer is responsible for the views expressed by their guests. As Reasoned UK, you'll always find unfiltered opinions allowing the audience to make up their own minds. That said, in future, I can promise that there will be a host who is much more willing to challenge those opinions. Now that's sort of Darren Grimes saying, oh, I just wasn't concentrating in, in that particular period. Um, you know, it's a live interview. These things happen. What could I have done? I should have challenged him in that moment. Now, I mean, one problem with this is if you want to be an interviewer, like, you know, fix up. Um, two, you know, if, if you're creating a space which is for people who've been accused of racism, I mean, it's not a surprise when some of them spout racist nonsense. But also, let's look at this tweet um, that he sent 24 hours before that apology. Um, slightly at odds with what he says afterwards. So he says, they say never meet your heroes. Well, I virtually met one of mine and it was bloody fantastic. Dr. David Starkey and I discussed the scholarship behind the laudable slogan of Black Lives Matter compared to the movement seeking to delegitimize British history. Have a watch. Uh, we can also get up his tweet from Parler, uh, the sort of right wing version of Twitter that we talked about on a previous show. It's so good. I'm watching it back again. Um, this is not a guy who disagrees with anything David Starkey said. He was nodding along as he was saying it all. He, I mean, obviously, I can't confirm he agrees it, but the evidence is pointing in one direction, isn't it? 
Um, the dumbest take, um, I think, was from Julia Hartley Brewer. Let's get this up. Um, so she was defending Darren Grimes. Remember when everyone attacked Emily Maitlis what, about what Prince Andrew said in that interview she did with him on Newsnight? No, me neither, right? The point there she's making is, look, you can, uh, it's, it's not the responsibility of the interviewer what the interviewee says. Now, I think if Emily Maitlis, straight after doing that interview, had tweeted, they say never met, you, meet, met, never meet your heroes. Well, I virtually met one of mine and it was bloody fantastic. Um, I think people would have um, had something to say if after that interview she called Prince Andrew one of her heroes. But also Prince Andrew was lying through his teeth through that interview. The equivalent is actually Prince Andrew going, yeah, you know, I do love spending time with with teenage girls. I really enjoy it. And she's nodding her head going, yeah, yeah. I bet you <laughs> and then afterwards, and then sharing the interview afterwards going, you know, hat to watch it again. Brilliant. What a ma an amazing man. That's the equivalent. I mean, she, Julie Harley really knows what she's doing. Fine. You know, again, she's another one stealing and living. Fine. Let her do it. Again, the, the, the thing is, when you look at a free country, you can spout all the, the bullshit you like. The thing that I don't like is the BBC kind of giving it a veneer of legitimacy. It's ridiculous. And it's not just a one off, you know, people from Navarro go on the BBC, whatever. She's one of the mainstays, right? There's four or five people who basically every week are on BBC Question Time. And and they say really batshit crazy things. And I, I, all I want to say is, look, if, if you're going to have one of those from the right, have one of them from the left, right? Uh, and actually, there's not many batshit crazy people on the left. But there's not really an analogue because guess what? The market doesn't really pay for that stuff. So it tends to be like the spectator or Rupert Murdoch that pays for these people because their role is primarily political to take the country's conversation in a particular direction. Uh, and it's the same with Darren Grimes, by the way. This Reason channel, it, it's really professionally done. It's come out of nowhere. They're using Twitter advertising, right? I've seen some of their, for instance, when you go on the, the Darren Grimes' Twitter, he's posting from Instagram, from YouTube, and they get like a preview card and it says like, you know, Twitter advertisers. They're spending big money on this. Where's that coming from, right? They're spending big money on this. And at the same time, they get it kind of, they get the foot up from the BBC, which the rest of us are paying for. For what? For this kind of crap, for this garbage. You asked where they're getting their money from. I think there is some probably, you know, some sponsorship going on. I wonder if the Koch brothers are involved. Obviously, complete speculation. I don't know. Um, but let's uh, take a look at an Ian Dale tweet uh, because he was directing <laughs> people to fund this channel uh, only days ago. So this has now been deleted, but let's get it up. If you're on the right and want to help counter left wing propaganda on the Internet, here's how you can do it. Help grow reasoned. Um, this, so he's, he's sent this, he, he, again, it's sort of saying, is reason, this is for reasonable people to counter the sort of hostile left-wing agenda, which is encroaching on our right to talk honestly about things. Um, but now let's look at his, um, you know, his follow-up tweet to this with his tail between his legs. Just to clarify, I tweeted a link to a GoFundMe page for Reasoned. I had not seen the interview, but now have. The views expressed in it should have been taken apart. In no way do I associate myself with them. But if you look at their crowdfunder, uh, it seems like he has associated with them in another way. So there is a £100 donation from someone called Ian Dale. It could be, obviously, I don't know. Maybe this is someone who's wasted £100 to try and pretend to be Ian Dale and give them some money. But ultimately, what does this whole sorry affair show? It's that when people say, you know, it, it's not a coincidence that this platform was started for people who get accused of racism and when they're allowed to talk openly, they do a big racism, right? It's uh, people who say that people call people racist too often. I mean, often what they want to do is be completely racist. And I feel like Ian Dale, someone who's been in, you know, the mainstream media for decades, should understand what people like Darren Grimes are about. It's it's not, this is not someone who's trying to say, oh, we should be able to speak freely about things. Cancel culture's got too extreme. This is someone who will nod along while a guest um, who he has sort of said, you know, you can, you can speak freely on this platform. A guest is saying there are too many damn blacks or why are there so many, implying there are too many damn blacks in, in Africa and, and Europe um, because the slave trade wasn't quite violent enough, right? It's kind of the logical conclusion. Mm -hmm.